What's up? It's Beatty. Time for the August Q&A. But I get this question a lot. I want to knock it out real quick. Why do I always sound like I'm out of breath? So, I'm from Pittsburgh. We talk till we hit the end of our sentences and we keep talking until we can't talk anymore. So, us constantly gasping is pretty common. So, when I first started doing my videos, I was talking like as if I was from Pittsburgh. And I'm not that great at public speaking yet. So you combine those two, you get this weird raspy voice <laughs> that I've been working on for the past couple months. Anyway, now that's out of the way. Uh, if you like what I do, subscribe. If you like this video in particular, like it. I have a Patreon if you want to support the cause, and I sell men's health aid products at Peak Male Physique. They are not needed, but they can help in certain situations. Let's get into it. Oh, just another note on the Pittsburgh accent is like routinely voted for like the second worst accent in the United States. So it could be a lot worse if I was like my granddad, I'd be saying Warsh and gum band and gumbo and all kinds of stuff, but I'm a little more sophisticated. So, <laughs> all right. Starting off with the YouTube questions first. Okay, I finally found them. So, first, Foxface asks, is hanging with the male hanger more optimal than using an all-day stretcher like the Penis Master? Probably. So first, Penis Master is not that great a device, don't at me. But, with the male hanger, you have more control over the weight you are using, and you can be sure that you're actually applying attention to the penis. With an extender, that is not always obvious. It's probably the biggest rate of failure in this community <sighs> because extenders are just hard to get right in general. Hangers are typically more effective than all day stretchers just because they're way easier to gauge tension. And with the Peanut Master in particular though, it is an extender as well as an all day stretcher, it's like a full system. Not a big fan of it just because of its price tag. Um, but yeah, it's uh, with extenders, it's hard to gauge pressure because, well, there's no like actual X amount of weight you're using. It's based off of tension springs. And then with an all day stretcher, it's going against your thigh and it may not be obvious how much tension you're using, right? So with that alone, it's there's a lot more guesswork than it is just hanging five pounds if you're not gaining, go to six. If you're not gaining, go to seven. And eventually you will start stretching out that tissue. It's not that you can't gain with the Peony Master. If I've seen it done. But hangers in general are more consistent with their results. Cool Kid asked, how long for pumping gains to be permanent? Ah, uh, depends on what you mean by permanent. Like new, if you're building up new tissue, then that's going to take at least four to six months. If we are talking erection quality and you stay healthy that's only going to take about two to four weeks so and then if you're just talking about training capacity that's only going to take one to two months to see that kind of improvement typically if you're looking for permanent results and then even with you fall back to baseline of penile health it's going to be at least four to six months of work and then just andy <laughs> asks, what peptides do you take um do i recommend any supplements to assist in growth um, currently I am not on any peptide, but I have taken BPC-157 in the past, as, as well as IGF-1-LR-3. BPC falls into my healing response theory, so the faster you heal, the more you can gain. In the short time I used it, I've seen expedited results, and I've seen others do the same thing. It's kind of hit and miss still, from what I can tell, but like with everything, there's going to be some non-responders. IGF-1 is very interesting i pretty sure it, it definitely helped with like the swell response from say penis pumping but i definitely noticed a way better effect in the gym that was probably the uh substance that i took that was most responsible for my most recent body recomposition just because it signals your body to absorb everything instead of having this sugar turn into fat it goes directly into the muscle for work so even though I was still eating in a deficit, any blood sugar running rampant would go directly into my muscles, causing them to be swole. 
and more active for growth. But for penis enlargement, it probably helps. It's still undetermined what dose it will help and what and how effective it actually is. And then do I take any supplements or do I recommend any supplements for growth? Nothing really over the counter is going to help you. Uh, there are certain things that will help with blood flow and fertility. And let's just say me and Hank are working on something for that. But essentially, L-citrulline and then stuff to improve your libido will help your erection quality. So we're talking like maca and then a few other things like... I'm not well versed on the libido stuff because trust me, libido does not need to be higher. But I've tried maca. That works pretty well. And then L-citrulline's in all my pre-workouts and I noticed the effects almost instantaneously. It doesn't really affect my penis that much, but I've always been like a shower. So... I've had good blood flow there already, but I've, I've definitely seen anecdotal evidence that it helps men in that arena. On to Reddit. So Artistic Experience 32 ask, what are my thoughts on doing length and girth at the same time versus separately? <sighs> okay. I believe we need to divide and conquer after month five. Month four or five. And that is because you only get a set amount of, let's call it, stimulus that you can possibly apply to the penis before it becomes overburdening. So let's use like my bicep for an example. If I constantly train it for every day, say let's do five sets a day, not even five, let's say 10 sets a day of bicep curls, there's gonna be a point where the amount of work I'm doing is causing more damage to my muscle than a stimulus for growth. Now, the penis is not a muscle, but talking about the gym is a good proxy for this. If we are applying too much stimulus too often to our penis, it will never fully recover, therefore never fully heal, and cause the propagation of tissue that we need. That is one of the reasons why I don't recommend doing length and girth, because the stimulus that you're going to be creating is going to be too much to overcome. And when I mean length and girth at the same time, then that brings me to the next point. If you are going to be hanging an hour a day and pumping a day, that is two hours of your life that you're de devoting to your penis. There are much better ways to spend your time. And personally, I've seen better results focusing on one for say an hour. And then Moving on to the other one, like so my net gain was higher. Secondly, you're going to be less conditioned, or is that thirdly? I think thirdly, <laughs> you're going to be less conditioned to the stimulus. So like when you switch from length to girth, it's going to take much less work to see gains in girth when you switch to it fully. So if you constantly switch between it, the amount of work you need is going to be lower. And that's what I do the vast majority of the time now six months of length six months of girth unless i accidentally have to take a re uh, the conditioning break because i did a stupid thing causing scabs on my penis and i had to take a month and a half off so i'm predominantly working on length but i've took them the time off anyway i'll get more into it in a bit hopefully i explained that well if not let me know and i can make a separate video Le baguette magic ask is progressive overload as important as it is in bodybuilding or just switching routines and taking decons enough for sustained gains? There will be a point where progressive overload is pointless for penis enlargement because this is not like building a muscle. This is controlling the healing response. So you only heal so fast. You can't exert more tension than you are. You can't exert more tension than you can reasonably recover from. So your penis doesn't really get stronger, but the connective tissues inside of it do. And that is a much slower progressive overload process. And if you take two months off, it's just going to reset and you'll be gaining faster than you did for the past four months before the deconditioning break. So in my opinion, getting above like say 15 pounds vacuum hanging and 20 to 25 pounds compression hanging just off the top of my head is pointless and the same goes for if you need to pump for more than an hour a day for progressive overload for girth then you need to take a break your tunica is hard as steel and there is also no real evidence that there is progressive overload for girth it seems like there should be but there's no like hardcore evidence backing that up so 
take that as a grain of salt. And then it's Mr. Dubs kind of chimes in as well on this. Basically, he wants to know how long, why, and if sparfs work is okay during a deconditioning break. So how long? Six to eight weeks seems to be the sweet spot. And that is because your tissues basically fully rejuvenate in that time frame. So you lose any strength adaptations. In that period, sparse work depends on what you define as sparse. Five minutes stretching out the suspensory ligament a day is not going to change anything. So like, go ahead and do that. It's probably beneficial. Most of my deconditioning breaks have been a complete stop, however. I would not recommend continue pumping. Light stretching is probably fine. I only really do deconditioning breaks is when I need a mental break from PE or if I have an injury. Uh, otherwise, if your life gets in the way, it's perfectly fine. This should not be your main focus. Even if you're a psycho like me trying to make a business out of it, this should not be your main focus. If you have not gained in the past two months and you're beyond the newbie stage, it might be worth considering but you would probably get a better idea of when to do this if you ask specific to your situation. So if you have an issue, ask on r slash getting bigger and then someone that has experience will be able to answer your question. Bara Gamer asks, is it possible to get flaccid girth gains and how? So yes, it's honestly quite easy to get flaccid girth gains. There are two things you need to do. First, you need to make sure your pelvic floor is not tight. If your pelvic floor is tight and the iseocavernous muscle is tight, you will not get substantial blood flow while flaccid. Therefore, it is going to shrivel up. And that's what essentially makes it grow a grower. Second, the tunica albuginea constricts when flaccid. If you have a tight tunica and tight connective tissue inside the penis, you are going to be uh, smaller flaccid. So relaxing your pelvic floor and stretching out this tunica and having it stay relaxed when you are flaccid is what causes a shower. Basically how I became a thick flaccid guy <laughs> is just from pumping. Because pumping teaches your penis to overexpand and it stretches the tunica a little bit and then eventually if you continuously do this stimulus to the penis it will become more relaxed and in a large state. Um, you can speed up this training by wearing cock rings afterwards for extended periods of time, say one to two hours, and that's going to cause the tunica to like kind of mold into this shape while rested, so bloated, essentially. Not saying that you're going to have an edema response the entire time, but your tunica is going to lay more relaxed. And then as for relaxing the pelvic floor, I've done a whole video on this about a month ago. I think I did a good job. So maybe check that out. And if you start building up more tissue in general, you're going to get a bigger flaccid. So JK Henley asks, what do you recommend to commandability for only just the first little bit for PE? I'm going to be a benefit to always be doing it with girth exercises and do clamp bends help with length. It seems like it should. Uh, I don't recommend bending your penis at any point point beyond 50% erect because that blood needs to go somewhere and let's just say you are trying to cause a penile fracture now that is a little different so let's say you're at the end of your clamping set and you're very spongy because the tunica has finally given up <laughs> then it is probably safe to do this but if you are or you have not done PE for two years do not even try this I will be mad if you do to compatibility in the beginning uh, my protocols are set up that you focus on stretching out the ligament and maximizing erection quality at the beginning so you will not need to malleability for the first say four months and then when you actually start working on girth more frequently then you're going to need tunica malleability i did a video on this explaining when and where you should use this i, th I think at least it's in that video it's been i don't know three or four months now but that's probably also worth checking out too. And just a note on tunica malleability. There, I've, I've been coming around to the idea that it may help length depending on how stiff the inner core of the penis. So the penis has the tunica albuginea, right? But inside the two, or inside where the corpus cavernosum chambers meet, along with the corpus spongiosum, there's gonna be like this long string 
of connective tissue that can sometimes get stiff and that can also limit length gains because if that thing's strong as nails then you can only pull so far so you need to come at it from a different angle to break it down and allow yourself to gain again uh it's common as you let's say you've been doing manuals a lot it's more common doing that i've noticed developing this steel cord but um if you take proper deconditioning breaks i don't think it's going to be an issue but mainly what i'm getting at is there might be some benefits doing like semi erect bends and stuff like that uh for length gains just because you're going to be stretching out the tunica in a different way and then be working this septum i believe it's called don't quote me on that another question so outrageous length 639 ask about supplements for pe uh this for mainly eq improvements so the only supplement that's really the single ingredient that's going to be worth a damn is l-citrulline just because that's like the main vasodilator l-arginine might help and then from what hink and i have been looking into uh stimulant free pre-workouts will have a lot of the same effects as long as it's not like a thermogenic thing for general health practices you just want to be a cardio bunny like <laughs> Um, my erection quality was best when I was doing hit cardio two to three times a week, along with, uh, one hour and 20 minutes of fat burning cardio. And then I walked my dogs for 20 minutes. So like I was doing basically 10 hours of cardio a week at one point. And that's when my EQ was the best, but my joints were at their worst. So <laughs> pick your poison. Uh, I don't know any food recipes that would help for PE. To be honest, um, watermelon has a lot of L-arginine in it, I believe. And then you just want to have a healthy hormone profile for boosting erection quality, probably limiting intake of vasoconstrictors. So if you're a caffeine fiend, that's going to set you back a bit. I'm a caffeine fiend. It doesn't really affect me, but I'm also on other compounds that may or may not be helping my blood flow upstairs okay 65 14 ask how long does it take to pull out the inner penis on average all right so let's change the phrasing on that the inner penis is you're not going to really be pulling that out because that fucker <laughs> extends really deep into your hip all right so like we're talking all the way to like halfway to your butthole almost. So doing that is also going to cause a whole bunch of strain on the pelvic floor because you're literally pulling those muscles with your penis. So if you're using enough weight to actually uproot the shaft, you're probably doing it wrong. Now, what you are saying is how long does it take to have your penis come off the hip bone? So if you have tight ligaments, you can pull out more shaft that's sitting close to the exterior and just have it sit farther out. This is going to come down to how tight it was to begin with. Most guys are going to be reasonably stretched out six to eight weeks. And that's the point where you can continue to work it, but you're not going to be making as fast as games as you were, so you're probably better off to working the shaft. Now, what I've noticed, and I talked on this on last Q&A, is that as your shaft gets longer, the insertion point of the ligament comes out more, therefore tightening the ligaments. So eventually you're gonna to have to swap back to working the ligaments to get the flexibility back in and expose even more length that was starting to be pulled up. And that's what I'm playing with around now. And I'll get more into that in a bit. So yeah, you're not actually pulling out your inner penis, you're just pulling out superficial penis that's close to the hip, make sense? And when I say hip, I mean the place it inserts into the pelvis. It's growing 101 asks, is there any difference between extending and hanging if fatigue is reached at the same time frame? I have a total man extender and I can extend for an hour at moderate to high tensions and fatigue if within an hour. People say extending is best to be three hours a day to get effective gains. All right, all else being equal, tension is tension. Doesn't matter how it's generated, if the weight or the Newtons generated from this is equal, it does not matter. The problem with older extenders, not saying total man, is 
that they can only generate up to like four pounds, 2000 grams worth of pressure. The total man extender can generate up to 15, I believe. So you're getting a very good comparison to most hanging regiments. So if you're feeling fatigue with your extender, it is going to be the same, if not better than as hanging because you're also stretching the penis shaft slowly. So the ligaments are not involved whatsoever. Not to say that hanging is not effective at all, but extending is slightly better for shaft gains while hanging is slightly better for ligament targeting. And there's also no ceiling to how much you can hang, theoretically. Obviously your dick will rip off above like say 70 pounds, but we're getting too deep. Viking RT asks all the methods you know for bigger glands. Well, first, I know LA Pump sells a fetish cylinder just for developing a mushroom. Uh, I don't have it. Trust me, I don't need one. But that will cause all the pressure to build up on the glands. You gotta be careful, though, because too much pressure can piss off all those nerve endings. So, slow to grow for that. However, my head, or glands, whatever you want to call it, was the fastest growing part on me for the past couple years. What I did mainly to get my glands inadvertently was vacuum hanging without any tape or anything like that. This basically is a pressure sealed vacuum chamber just for the head of your penis. So that weight is going to apply a vacuum onto your penis and you're going to get this plump ball for a penis right after using a vacuum hanger. At least if you do it the way I do it. Eventually that's going to enlarge and become new tissue, bigger glands. Also, clamping worked the shit out of my glands just because all that pressure builds up since the tunica is very thin, if not, not even present on the glands, then that's going to actually expand more compared to the rest of the shaft. Eventually, that's going to cause even more uh, stimulus to the glands than say to the rest of the penis because it received more growth pressure. If that makes sense. That's probably not sound science, but I think you understand what I'm saying. Sacred Bones ask, been off and on of pre-E for about a year and a half with engineering school keeping me busy, just asking for a solid pumping and length routine, something easy and relatable. Pump in the shower for two sets of 10 minutes and then do straight down pulls for five between the cheeks for five and then left and right legs for five that might be a little too much work but if work is work and school are far more important than getting a bigger dick okay that's actually going to change your life this stuff is just going to give you confidence okay yeah it's important to be confident but i get my confidence more from my intelligence than i do from my endowment there's nothing wrong of waiting until your schedule frees up to actually start this for real Okay. LWJ748 asks, do I think foreskin restoration can aid in PE similar to how fascia stretching can help bodybuilders? Uh, it's nothing related to fascia stretching, but yeah, I think it can just for appearances alone first. Um, you're not going to have base tenting and you're going to have a normal looking frenulum by the end of this. What I've realized since I started doing foreskin restoration is that I've stretched my skin out so much that my frenulum was so tight it did not ruffle and therefore I lost sensation from doing that. Since I started doing foreskin restoration and that skin began to loosen, certain positions in sex are like mind blowing compared to what they were before. So those two alone, or for appearances and slight increases in sensitivity alone, are huge helps for PE, but on top of that, the skin can actually limit your expansion depending on how tight it is. Yeah, it can help with that much, and then if you say you have a lot of base skin creep, your pump sessions are going to be weird because that skin at the base is going to take the brunt of the expansion. And so if you have more skin on your shaft, meaning that less skin has to pull up when you're erect, you're going to get a better engorgement effect upstairs okay six five one four i think you already asked a question bastard <laughs> now um can you progressively overload with just manuals yeah why not all you do is increase time or you can just start doing a bunch of curls getting stronger biceps and grip but <laughs> the easiest way is to increase time so instead of doing five one minute sets you do 10 one minute sets and you just doubled your workload therefore progressive overload victor cook 120 ask let's say you started with five inch length and six five in length five in girth 
How would you put 6.5 inches in length point didn't get to 6 inches in girth? I am butchering this question. And how long do you think it would take? I would try to knock out my ligaments and erection quality. Uh, then I would focus mainly on length until I got to 6, then get to 5.5 girth, and then swap between until I hit my desired size. If I had no budget constraints, I would just get a pump and a hanger. And let's see, an inch and a half in length is going to take about 14 to 18 months. And then an inch in girth is going to take about a year and a year and a half. So we're looking at about three to three and a half years where you hit your goal size. Now, you may gain faster. Who knows what your EQ is starting at? You may be a freaky responder. You may be a non-responder. So this question is kind of hard to answer definitively. All right. Doc Hank ask update to how I am healing and PE routine plans moving forward. So I now have slight scars. Yeah, they actually are kind of slight, but I also have slight scabs as well, because let's say the skin finally connected, and now it needs to build up. So those scabs are still there. They are not nearly as annoying as they were three weeks ago. And I would say I'm probably going to be fully healed by, uh, what is it, the 6th? So about the 24th, I would hope. Uh, but I did restart PE. I'm keeping it very light. I have been doing manual stretches, just targeting the ligaments for about 15 minutes a day. And then I am doing 15 minutes total of light girth work. So either clamping, I know it's not very light, but for me at my conditioning level it is. And then I'm doing five minutes of, three sets of five minutes of pumping. If I think my skin can handle it that day. But yeah, I'm healing fine. My erection quality has been low-key insane because of this, and I've also stopped cutting for a bit just because it was getting too stressful of everything that we've been working on. So, yeah, penis is feeling good. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry, but if you have a poorly formatted question, I'm not going to try to decipher it. So, yeah, comes ask. I think explaining tissue adaptation would be very helpful. I know me and him have a bit of a back and forth in the past. And let me tell you, he just overthinks things a lot. Um, <laughs> how long does it usually take for the penis to adapt to a certain exercise before you can't gain it from anymore? There's no point where that would reasonably happen. Right. Because even if you do hit that certain point, say two years of doing nothing but manuals, you just take a break for two months and you're basically back to square five instead of square 200. So, yeah. I guess there is a point where something may not be beneficial. Basically, from what I'm reading is that he is doing very advanced exercises and not pretty, not seeing much expansion or gains from it. You just need to take a break for two months, rethink it, go to my protocols, drop the hard clamp. So, we talked about this last month, right? I do not like hard clamps. Soft clamps are the way to go. They fit penises better, and there is less room for error or I mean there is more room for error so they're easier to work with so yeah stop doing clamp squeezes you're gonna hurt yourself take two months off from what i remember you're ridiculously hung already just relax you are fine <laughs> two months is nothing you can handle it and then look into one of my protocols specifically for girth because i think you are just brunt forcing it and that's not the smartest way to go about it okay it's mr dubs asking I have covered, the, or I may have covered this, but there seems to be multiple camps for AD, ADS all day stretcher use. Your perspective would be interesting. Some guys have gained while wearing an ADS for many hours and doing little other PE. So others say it is useful for newbie games and healing in a elongated state. Finally, some way such a load tension is not well time spent. Okay, so they're all right. <laughs> First, you can gain with an all-day stretcher for long hours of the day. If you wear it all day at moderately low tension levels, you will still get the newtons required to break down the penis and still get over the threshold to actually cause this stimulus. So there is a point where wearing it all day and just like say you have your flaccid slightly past or it's just too erect length, you are not going to gain anything from it. However, if you were say 5% past um, erect length while wearing it. You're causing enough stimulus to actually cause this tissue to have to adapt. So yeah, 
you can gain with it from wearing it all day. I personally don't think that's worth it. I think you just crank up the tension a little bit more, wear it for one to two hours, and then call it a day. And I don't believe in healing in an elongated state. It doesn't really matter because you are going to be doing this every day, right? These wounds are going to be reopened no matter what then. So what's the point of keeping something strapped to your leg all day just for maybe a 1-2% to chance of it actually having an effect? Now, if you're trying to train your flaccid to stay elongated, that's a different story. But for length gains, like erect length gains, I don't see any point in healing an elongated state. Unless we're talking about girth, and that's a little different. And I'm talking about, like, in a bloated state, then elongate. <sighs> God, I'm losing my voice. Uh, some guy asked if I've ever measured on camera, because I still look like six. Not hating. Sounds like you are. But, anyway, just for my YouTube boys, I do have all my logs and stuff on Reddit in varying states of quality. I did a video comparison after one year of PE in April, I believe. So you can see my gains there in the flesh. That is r slash getting bigger. I can't share it on YouTube because it's technically a porn site in YouTube's mind. But it's there for you, and that, now I'm going to say for that. All right, so I covered a shit ton of questions. I think I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, if you like what I did... <laughs> <laughs> if you like the video, like it. If you like what I do in particular, subscribe. Patreon, peak male physique, r slash getting bigger, yada, yada, yada. You get the drill. This is BD signing off.